Hi, I'm Anna. I'm Ben. We're Odyssey and welcome to our channel. Today we're watching Madoka Magica, Season 1, Episode 2. Last episode we were introduced to Madoka, Homura, Hitomi, Sayaka, Kube, which looks like Terry Ramon from Digimon, and Mommy. Mommy. I don't have a name other than that, but I'm loving this show. It's so interesting. I've never seen magical girl things in a completed work you know, yes, not just random episodes. Hopefully finish. And the mixed medium is slightly creepy. <laughs> yes, but no, I totally agree I with you. I have a lot of questions about chairs and magic systems, and I hope that I get answers. Let's get those answers. Ready? Yeah. Sweet. We get to see the transformation again. Mommy Tomo. Okay. Tomoe. Third year. Third year. So cool. She's made a contract with Kyube. Another dream. She had healing powers too, mm -hmm. right? Seemed like it, or at least she could heal Kyube. Are you around all the time? <laughs> How is it usually in like, uh magical girl anime where there's like a creature are they around all the time yeah they are like pets to some extent like they live with you the main character are you going to be referring to the blonde girl as tomoe or mommy mommy i'm gonna go with tomoe <laughs> i wonder what the family's reaction to kube will be is it gonna be like a secret she has a little sibling and there could be some cute antics of the little sibling playing with kube She had like a blue cat there. See? It's like Sailor Moon. Oh. Did we get to see what that was like? Okay. Oh, okay. Whoa. Live alone. That looks amazing. Please. <laughs> a soul gem. A soul gem is born. It's like Maiden Abyss. Not really. <laughs> Grant you one wish. Any wish you desire. Is that the power base? Anything. Okay. Duty bound to do battle with witches. So if you love who you are, you wouldn't want to change anything, right? You wouldn't want to make a wish. I hope this is the start of every episode. <laughs> Whoa. Witches are creatures curses. born from curses. Spread despair. Invisible to regular humans. That's why we couldn't see who Homer was fighting, right? Jeez. Wow. They create labyrinths. They create labyrinths. Wow. Mm -hmm. You become duty bound. Okay, witch, witch hunts. hunts. Cool shot. I like that they can like experience it before deciding. The worth. What would you wish for? <laughs> she can't see. 
I love the score. Ah. Uh. Yes. Especially if you're keeping secrets. <laughs> Don't say that. <laughs> I'm not going to be able to get over this. I wonder if we'll find out after, like, Whoa. in this episode, what they choose. Yeah. Oh, God. What's her reaction going to be? Oh my god. That's insane. It's like when you find out someone is like listening in on your private phone call. That's <laughs> not cool. Is she a witch? No. Okay. Why does she want to attack them? Mm. Oh. oh. And she's okay with these two making a contract with the same one she made a contract with? Jesus. Oh, it's a ring! That's so fucking cool. Does that mean it's a bracelet for... for Homura? I hope Homura can hear everything. I guess not, because she might not have a contract with Cuba. Yeah. <laughs> I wonder if what that will actually place? be her outfit. <laughs> It seems like they're both leaning towards yes at the moment. That's very right. fair. This is the coolest school rooftop I've ever seen. No. Maybe Madoka wants to. Wow. 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 Holy shit. This is so cool. Maybe she just wants to have a conversation. Kill it. She's so focused on Madoka. It's like Sayaka doesn't matter. Too personal. That's a pretty personal thing to ask, mm -hmm. right? Especially with Sayaka's speech about suffering. <laughs> You're so bad for her. <laughs> her demeanor with everybody else is so different. Yes. Yes, lesson one. Day in the life. I'm ready. I love her with all of my heart. 
She's gonna destroy those witches. <laughs> Two different types of people. <laughs> I would be Madoka in this scenario. The eyes. The exit sign again. It's a little Coraline, how she drew the eyes. Why do we keep seeing that exit sign? Does that mean we're gonna get to that point soon? Or? Maybe it's like exit entrance into the labyrinth. Mm. <laughs> you really, you can't just ask someone what they wished for. <laughs> Someone that's being cursed, like becoming a curse. A score. Oh my god. Jesus. Oh no. This is becoming so metal. Invisible, you just see the shoes. Whoa! What Whoa, the like fuck? A, a witch's, witch's kiss. kiss! That's so fucking horrible. What's that on the wall? A witch is kissing somebody and making them jump off a building? So cool. Oh, look at that bat. Whoa! I trust Sayaka. It's like we're going into like a domain. Mm -hmm. The reluctancy. Oh! She's coming with. What the fuck? God, I love this show so much. You can just leave it? Whoa. Yes. Whoo! What? The shoes? Yeah, the like, fucking shoes. The lady. Whoa. Oh, it's like, is that like the door? Is that what the witches look like? This is the craziest thing I've ever seen in my life. This is like boss music. Oh! Oh, it is like a boss! What the fuck? How does it kiss you? I'm almost scared she's gonna lose because of her saying that. Whew! What is this song? Whoa! Oh no. <laughs> My future so magical uncool. girl juniors. Whoa. Like all the bullets. Close but no cigar. What the fuck? Yo, what? <laughs> this is... Wow. And a cup of tea. That. And so the labyrinth would, would disappear. Grease seed. Grease seed. A witch's egg. You can cleanse it? Oh! It was your kill. 
She works alone, but she did come. Wolf. True. That is true. This is so fucked up. Wow. We just saw what the witches do. Their influence. And what you'd be fighting for. You're literally saving someone. It's so interesting that what would it be? Oh. She colored it in. I wonder why Kyube stays with Madoka, you know? Is it just like that energy and friendship? Or is it like potential? I have theories. You have theories? Yes. Oh my Okay, that was Madoka Magica season one episode two. One, two, three I have four pages of notes. We both filled up a lot of pages. That might have been the best thing that I've ever seen. In my pitiful, sorrowful excuse for a life, this is a bright light, a window, shining on eternal happiness that I've never knew existed or thought was possible. God. I am also enjoying it. <laughs> I, I I don't know what to say, man. I don't know where to start. We okay. Should probably start from what? Sayaka the is the best character. The, okay. Sayaka was the best... Ugh. Sayaka is one of my favorite characters. She showed up with the fucking oh, bat. Yeah. <laughs> it was the best thing I, ever. I definitely appreciate that mommy transformed the bat. Into something useful. Into something that was like actually useful in the labyrinth. Oh. I really liked that touch. Like it's like your dedication and your effort isn't going unnoticed. I'm like, it was cute that you brought the bat. Just as it was cute that Madoka drew the pictures. I would have brought a bat, for sure. I think I would have been Madoka in this scenario, and you like, would have brought the bat to you the You ever, thing. like... You know, when I, was, when I was younger, there was this house in my neighborhood. And from the time I was born, and I could remember, to the time I was, like, 18, it was completely abandoned. Nobody ever pulled up to go inside it was decrepit like doors were broken locks were broken windows were broken people thought it was haunted i was like i'm going into that house i'm sneaking into that house so one night i had a couple friends come over they didn't know what they were getting themselves into but i told them the plan and i was like we got to sneak there you know we got to we got to get into that house and see what's going on see if it's haunted and i showed up with the bat I can't tell if you're quoting something that happened in a movie and pretending it was your life. Or no. If you but you are one that would go to a haunted and or abandoned location. So I think I'm going to take this as like, you know, when someone's like two truths and a lie, you know, yeah. I think I might pick that as a truth. Like, I, I can I, see that happening. Af after going to this house for a bit, we thought that like, you know, people were coming for us. So we have to leave. You're but, making it less believable. But, now I, but before I left... I found this old looking flashlight. No, you didn't. Yeah, and I still have it. No. Yeah, and it's like it it you could tell that I'm nobody had been in this house this. for 18 years at least because like this flashlight was green and like light and it, it you it, you'd look at it and be like that never worked. That is too specific. Yeah, and and I showed up that night though with a bat. And you know, I could have chose something more inconspicuous, but I didn't. And I think that the reason I did was for this moment, and I just didn't know it yet. It makes every everything makes sense now. God, Sayaka is so cool, and you know what? You, honestly, I loved her before the bat. That I never thought that we would even get a glint. Like, oh yeah, you can have any wish that comes true. Sayaka's monologue about like what the fuck privilege do they have? Oh, like, dude. Like, there are people who need this way more. And the right. fact that they can't even think of something to wish for is further proof of it. I was like, you are the best character ever that right. I've ever seen. I loved that. And the I, it ignorant felt like... to suffering, fools, most girls say yes right away. And then Homura coming out afterwards, I was almost like, oh my god, this is like acknowledgement. 
Like they're they're probably oh my god. Okay, can we just read the lines? Yes, no, just I, I think that's a great idea. Um wishing for something so strongly that you'd gladly trade your life for it. There must be countless people within this world who have such wishes in their heart. Most likely, it means the two of us who can't even figure out what to wish for haven't experienced even a fraction of those people's sufferings. We've, we've been, been so blessed, blessed that we've become, become ignorant, ignorant fools. fools. What? Where you're just gonna come out with this like amazing perspective? What a fucking like introspective, wise, brilliant like what like. It's moment. so real though. Like if you were given a genie that had three wishes, what you'd wish for, I I think, could be a a strong teller of the maybe privilege that you've had in your life. What you would pick or wish for, how frivolous it was. But like, also, like, a personality or a person's heart. Like, how uh, maybe selfless or yeah. selfish. Could, do you think you could wish to transfer the wish? Like, could you be like, I wish that the potential of this outcome of this wish is transferred to somebody who needs it more than me? Or I wish that somebody else was given the option right. of being a magical girl instead of me. We don't know the parameters, obviously, because what if you could wish that you'd be the best magical girl out there of all the magical girls? Yeah. Then you would be the, like, ultimate uh, hero against the witches, but it, there must be parameters here. Like, he, Kyube was like, you can wish for, for anything, but I'm like, there has to be things that you couldn't. There has to be some type there of isn't. rules. There isn't. But you couldn't wish to be the best magical girl. Why not? Because then someone would have already done it. How do you know they haven't? That's fair. I, I have a shot in the dark theory that Madoka's going to use her wish for Homura. Ooh. Like, imagine if Homura, like, lost her entire family and couldn't protect them. And Madoka realized that. Madoka would be like, that's what I want to wish for. Or maybe, um, so when Homura, we, we get Madoka asking about what Homura's wish was, which obviously we immediately would think that might be a little too personal, especially coming off of Sayaka's lines about suffering. Um, but what if it is that she wished for something super frivolous or super selfish and it wasn't worth trading her life and maybe her family mm, or friends' lives over and putting them in danger. Yeah. That there might be some, and that could fit with her expressions that she gives as she's walking with Madoka in the hallway in episode one. She could have maybe a self-hatred. Yeah, maybe. Uh, which which could be interesting. My prediction is that Sayaka isn't going to go forward with it, but Madoka is. Interesting. Okay. And I think uh, there's a lot of evidence for that. Like, Homura doesn't care about Sayaka at all. Mm -hmm. Sayaka was couldn't hear Kyube, didn't have the dreams. The other magical girl, she's kind of just happenstance. She's involved because she ran into the room and Kyube decided to also offer her a contract. And she's the one with the introspection that's opening up the mind of Madoka to how much weight the wish should hold and choosing to put your life on the line for it. Yeah. It feels more like she will end up saying no, but being very supportive of Madoka's choice you going know, forward. I could totally see that happening. Like very likely, I think. I hope it's not the case, selfishly, because I want to see what Sayaka would be like mm -hmm. as a magical girl and what her like, you know, moveset would right. be and what she'd look like. But what I she could... brings to the table is also a evidence bat. of that. But Madoka <laughs> bat to the table. <laughs> brings to the table already imagining what it would be like if she was one. Yeah. Sayaka's like practical, oh, well, if we're going to go fight witches, I'll bring a bat. But Madoka's like in imagination land where when Kyube says most girls say yes right away, if Madoka had been alone and maybe Sayaka wasn't involved, would she have said yes sooner? Is, is a good question. She's huh. already drawing herself as a magical girl. She's imagining it. And just trying to figure starting, out what a wish would be. Just start trying to figure out what she wished for, but she's actively wanting to think about what her wish would be. Yeah. I, Where Sayaka seems to be taking it maybe on a more serious note of like balance, balancing things out, pros and cons. Do I actually want to do this? What would I even wish for? I find that this show is breaking my 
capability of discerning objective reality to subjective reality. I feel like typically I'm able to discern this is a good product. I like this and enjoy this. I like as this. everyone in a room, not as eighty percent of a room would like it. Mm. Like th- like I enjoy this. It's great. Other people would like it because it's a great product. And then on the other side of things, this specifically resonates with me. I acknowledge that it's not for everybody, but to me, it's a masterpiece. This is blurring the lines of like, this is the best thing ever. And does everybody, can everybody see it as that? Or like, to some people, is it too much? Is the mixed mediums, is everything that's going on like too fucking much? Because like, I, I, this is perfect. This is fucking insane. Like a couple things that I, after last episode, I would not, I was not at all thinking we'd go down this road of like severity and seriousness i am so happy we are and i'm shocked that we are like there's some details that i definitely want to talk about that like soul gems what they are Mm -hmm. but the idea of a witch's kiss pushing somebody to the brink of action of committing suicide and then once they're woken up from that they remember it they're like why would i do that the fact that she has a literal memory of like like she was locked in locked in her body like isn't there like a syndrome like locked in syndrome or something like that where you can't control your body but you're like completely awake and conscious that's what it reminds like me of sleep like sleep paralysis i that that but i think there's like an actual medical uh situation where someone is like paralyzed uh but they are like super conscious and awake and aware mm. that's what it makes me think of how terrifying that is that idea Jesus, I, like, it, I, that's fucked up. Mm-hmm. That is so fucked up. Like, uh, I feel like if this was a different Magical Girl anime, the lady that was about to jump off the building would have woken up and been like, where am I? Yeah. Oh, you just walked here. Uh, I'll take you home. They wouldn't have any memory of yeah. what they what they did. The Magical Girl would protect them from that terrifying reality that was almost a reality. Uh, this, the fact that she remembers is a wild, uh, take. It's so fucked up. Okay, so, soul gems are born out of, out of your wish, right? Mm-hmm. I love that people can't see Cube. I, the tel, te, the telep, telepathic ability that they're sharing is batshit, like, the fact that they can talk to Mommy Tomoe, like, From another within school, that's fucking crazy. Her, like... Her, like, watching Homura walking on the... Like, oh, my God. I love this show. Um, uh, so, w- with making that wish, you have a duty bound to do battle with witches. Mm-hmm. Um, and they're born from, from curses. curses. They're invisible they're, to humans. They're invisible to humans. That's fucking terrifying. Like, the, this That's woman was kissed of... by a witch and had no, no fucking idea. idea. There, it's not an unheard of concept for us in general for anime there are some like current action anime that has this idea of certain people can see the villain or the creatures that are wreaking havoc and other people cannot do not possess that power that's not an unheard of concept Mm -hmm. but when we get this idea that they are not directly directly Mm -hmm. this is an indirect attack on the person you're taking over the person's body and or causing those bad things to happen to that person instead of directly harming that person yeah uh, the creature directly harming that person and so there's another level of like fuck uppery there like it, it more fucked up i would say at least to some degree because it's more indirect and more like you're making the person anytime in a show where there's that idea of control or brainwashing it it, like it goes up a notch in terms of like unsettling uncomfortable someone not being able to control their actions and doing something that they would never choose to do themselves that isn't isn't real to them they're being affected and influenced by something else it's an incredibly uncomfortable idea to i would say people yeah when they're watching it because it's like that idea that someone someone or something could take over and your will would be gone Uh uh-huh 
terrifying. Jesus. I... I, there's, like, a, an amount of logic that goes with the way that, like, witches are invisible, blah, blah, blah. Like, to Sayaka's bat needing to be turned or changed. Mm-hmm. Like, it's, like, the human world and materials right, can't do is, shit. Especially in a labyrinth, with which we get the idea that it's created. Of course, a bat that is from the real world wouldn't do anything against a witch that's invisible to the human eye. And you are not meeting them on the human plane you're meeting them in a labyrinth of their creation in just like another dimension man i the idea labyrinth is in my top five favorite words humans that stray into them do not normally survive i love calling it a labyrinth like a maze i get to use the word labyrinth more and i can't thank this show enough for that i but the idea that it's, like, a, a maze is so interesting. Because when you think about the fact that, like, humans that travel into them do not survive, imagine being Most a don't human make it out. and you just you just walked into this thing. It really is a maze. Yeah. There, it's uh, this other... It's creepy. It's It'd be terrifying. Yeah. Uh, wow. Um, so one of the coolest things, too, is that I felt like... My interpretation of what I'm about to say was like, oh shit, Anna's never heard of this in her way more knowledgeable about magical girls. There's fucking competition between witches and like, in, or between magical girls and like infighting at certain points mm-hmm. because of the aspect of these rewards. That right. that was like mind blowing to me. But it's, um, it's, if we, if I re- remember or believe correctly, the reward is... Uh, just a cleansing of your your soul gem, your magic stock, and um, a replenishment. A replenishing of it, which means that you can then go on and fight more witches and save more people. But if if people, if there is enough acknowledgement that it needs to be said to Madoka and Sayaka that there are magical girls who are in competition with with each other and fighting over it that implies that there needs to be like a severity to mm-hmm. that desire and there needs to be magical girls who don't get these you know okay what are they called so what uh the, the witch egg yeah witch egg so uh, the, the line of, seed. There the line go. of thought that i'm going towards is if if there's this competition imagine that they're when you make this wish and you make this contract, as with any wish in a lot of uh, stories and folklore, there is consequence and or sacrifice that you didn't realize before you made the wish. What if it's like that you want to get it so that you can, t- can continue making whatever you gave up worth it? Like, if mm. you don't get to replenish your energy and continue saving people, then whatever you gave up with that wish you made and that choice you made would be for not like, or so i'm thinking more like okay th- if if it runs out the wish disappears and nullifies oh. number or, or it's death or like corruption like if this is muddied enough and it's not cleared up it, then since this wish it's like a contract right it's it like your life witch, it, it it could turn you into something corrupt or that could be that the risk to it if you're not doing this correctly, not getting these, you're going to die. Like, mm-hmm. you know, I, I don't know. I it could, I would never have thought that to be a possibility until we're getting into these fucking crazy right. severe. I, I like that you brought to the table maybe a more um, physical consequence and I brought to the table like more of like a mental turmoil yeah, yeah, yeah. of like you you want it to be wor- the sacrifice you made you want it to be worth it and maybe some self self hatred and uh self pressure yeah that you're putting on yourself uh kind of line of thought Choo-choo. Uh, what else do we have very fast subtitles oh i would agree with that this is going to be di- not it's not like at all causing any issue with me but you know you're what it makes me think about than i am though that's true you know know what i'm thinking about mm. fuck this is going to be hard to edit like, oh, shoot. yeah, <laughs> that, like, because typically, like, when editing, you're trying, like, with, with subtitles involved, you'd want to make sure that that like, clip of, of a reaction, because we have to cut it up, it is long enough that you're able to read the subtitles 
and, in and front of you. The people watching the reaction would be able to read. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But with this, you could you couldn't cut a single second of a line of subtitle no. out. Oh, I guess this will be interesting experiment for us too. We're right? also watching on Funimation, which oh, we I I don't like Funimation, but do. we couldn't. They didn't have subtitles on the. Which is either us just not seeing it and it was right under our nose and yeah. we missed it. Or it's like a different like iteration. It's like a sub version of who, who Madoka. Knows? We I, don't know. I I can't I feel like we've already been talking a, a bit and gushing a bit about this show, and I'm not even talking about like one of the best parts of the episode. I mommy, who I don't want to call mommy, <laughs> Tomoe. 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 Her fight was the craziest shit i've ever seen her like lifting her skirt up two rifles fall down her like it's it's so connected to her outfit and clothing that is given to her by being a magical girl that i love how involved skirt yeah that like that is directly involved with the weapons and then she like pulls out the fucking finale gun Th- that's a great way to put it. That's I, what she called it. She called it like trio finale. I need to watch it. Again. So she had like a. I love when characters have um a title for one of their moves. I love when characters finish off their move and then pull out a cup of tea and start drinking it. Yeah, God, Funimation, please. Uh, we're used to clicking around. Yeah. Close, Close but, but no, no cigar. What a cool tagline. Oh, one of, she had a really cool line, which I think might. Oh my before God. Line, but tree, uh, Tiro, Tiro finale. finale. Jesus Christ. I, I need to know what Homura's like iteration what of her, this would be. Like, what Madoka's is going to be. Uh, one of her lines before this was like, "I would look uncool in front of my future magical girl juniors." God, what a badass, dude! Do you have any any suspicion about her? We get the idea of the competition between magical girls. We know that Kube is who she's made a contract with. We, but we also know that she was willing to share the rest of the grief seed with yeah. Homura. Any suspicion? No suspicion? What are your thoughts? About what? About, uh, mommy. Being, like... Like, if she's truly as, I am your, like, upperclassman, and I'll take care of you, and I am genuine and, like, not jealous and I have no suspicion because the only type of suspicion I have is that she'd die. You know? I for a second thought she was gonna die like, in this I, episode. Like I'm sitting here trying to think how the fuck Madoka and Homura are going to get into the situation they're in the first episode without Tomoe there. You know? Right. Like and, and Because Tomoe would have also th- gone to fight whatever it exactly. needs to be fought. Like what would happen? why wouldn't mommy be a part of it? And mm-hmm. I, I like that you're bringing up the idea of suspicion because obviously it feels like you probably have a, like a little bit enough to bring up that as a subject, but mine would be more fear of the character, something happening to her. Yeah, I see. I actually, I can't directly think of anything that would have caused me from any other Magical Girl works to think of being suspicious of her. I was only taking it from knowing that there is competition yeah. and that this creature, Kyube, has a contract with this character mommy Mm. and that means there are other creatures out there that make contracts and if there's already a world of competition would there be then jealousy that who you have a you have to share interesting like q like remember how kube is now hanging out at madoka's room yeah what if he was always sleeping in mommy's room and now he's not that's true there might be a loneliness mommy lives alone yeah like So that's where my thoughts were going, not Mm. from like being informed or influenced by something else. I mean, not consciously, maybe subconsciously, like dreams, like Sayaka said in the first episode. Uh, But that's where my mind was going just because of the idea of competition and sharing. I, uh, there are a lot of cool reflection shots in this show, like uh, specifically the the mirrors. The first episode with Madoka, like in the bathroom mirror. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we had that in this episode too. And I had r- written it down for this episode because I was going to bring it up until we get the woman falling to her death when there's a fucking cooler reflection shot with a broken mirror. That's It's so yes. fucking cool, man. 
God, I love I the love, show. I love like extra. That was unnecessary, but I think that what makes it feel so real is that this is an abandoned, yeah. dilapidated building. Of course, there wouldn't be like perfect glass and that it would be broken. Uh, I, I love that. I love Madoka's mom. I love her to death. Like, I, I could watch an entire show about her trying to take over as the CEO of this company. Puella Maggi Madoka's mom. I love it. Uh, okay. Um, something else. Why does Homura not accept sharing the group seed? Any ideas for that? Um... I don't know because I, I I don't know like enough about Homura. Like it could be as simple as like, like because she said like you did this. This is your kill. Yeah. So, so is it just more like um her like nature and what she's like learned about being a magical girl and like the interactions with other magical girls that like we haven't met. Right. If she has this um kind of pride of. I don't want to give this burden to someone else, then sh- that ca- same character personality would also not want to take someone else's, like, spoils or yeah. reward. I could see those things being connected into the same personality. What the fuck would her wish be? We, of course, have no nothing to go off of but the family remark and, like, what, how much of a life change Your it would family, be from the first friend- episode. Is there, um, I wrote it down on what? the... Okay, here's a question. Here's a question. Why is she at new school right now? Right. Why did she have to transfer here? What happened that made her have to transfer here? What situation occurred? If you love your life, you wouldn't want a wish to become duty bound. Like you wouldn't want to change anything. So obviously she made a wish, even though in hindsight, she, she loved her life and now things have changed. There were consequences to and that. And after the wish was made, she started at a new school. Mm-hmm. You know? Right. Um, Madoka, at the end of the episode, if someone like me could save people, that would be truly wonderful. Mm. I, I love that idea of, like, it, it's sweet and cute because it's like, yes, Sayaka might have been right that I'm an ignorant fool and I don't know enough about suffering. But what you have there is a character who is so open to learning why she's wrong or yeah. why she's a fool just because she's, she wants to save people. And the idea that she, even though she may be a fool or not have enough of a world view, if she could still save people, like that would be truly, truly wonderful. I love the music in the show. Yeah, there's, there's some good really music. great songs. Not just the opening, like the like throughout the entire episode. There's some really awesome tracks. I was trying to see if I could read any of the writing, mm. but I'd imagine it's in a different language. <laughs> uh, going forward, I think what I'm most excited about is the um, the difference between choice and fate. We start mm. off episode one with this idea that there, it's fated, inevitable, but the Madoka can change things or make choices that can change things. And then here, while Homura knows Madoka is being uh, possibly contracted by Kyube and Kyube has picked out Madoka, Madoka still has a choice. But this idea of choice and fate and will with the yeah. witches... These things existing in the same conversation in universe. I'm Definitely going to breed interesting I'm results. excited, like, how that's going to play, play out. out. Yeah. How many episodes... I don't want you to spoil Cardcaptor Sakura for me. Um, I feel like this is probably... It could be a misconception. But when I think about, like, Sailor Moon or Cardcaptor mm-hmm. Sakura, I'm like, okay, it's like... It's like Pokemon in the same way that... It can go on a long time. Yes. This doesn't feel like that. And I don't know. It's unsettling that I don't know why. I don't know how many episodes are in the series. But it doesn't. With the tone. It doesn't feel like it. it's something with a thousand episodes. Right. Like in Magical Girl anime. There is a new villain. Or the villain is doing a new attempt. Like Team Rocket and Pokemon. In an episode. There's a magical girl transformation, the power of friendship. They're wiped off off the map, and then 
you go home and you go to sleep. And that and then it, you wake up the next day and it's a new it, it's a new That day. exists here, but I still don't feel like it's gonna be like that. But it feels more unsettling or the stakes might be higher. Yeah. Right. Man. I hope there's a lot of it. But I hope there's not too much of it. Does that make sense? Yeah. Like I want it like shows that go on forever have a very difficult time being a good uh, solidified piece of work in its own right start to finish right because it doesn't really finish mm -hmm. and if it does the, the the ending can be great but the whole thing like i don't know it doesn't necessarily have to sit well but for my own experience i want this to go on for a while but i also want it to have like a great contained plot i agree with that uh just putting one thing out there uh anyone who has watched shugo chara did and then they watched this or they watched this first and then watched Shugo Chara, which I'm not gonna spoil anything. But how did you feel when you saw the soul gem for the first time and then heard the phrase witch's egg? Did you feel did did, did you feel something when you heard those things? Hmm. Yep, that's all I wanted to say. I compared the fucking soul gem to something in Maiden Abyss during the episode. <laughs> like, it's so I know. <laughs> okay. I love, I'm really, Maybe really. Maybe it's the art style. No, I don't know. It's, I'm fucked up. I, I love this show so much. I'm, I'm really enjoying this show. I'm watching this. I'm very happy that we are watching this. Not just that we're getting to watch it, but that we're watching it together and that you're getting to watch something that I would choose to Here's watch Here's the myself. thing though. I, I, we had said even in between, uh, episode one and two here that this seems like something that you and I would watch together at like night before we go to bed or like, but when we're just chilling out and we'd watch, oh, this episode, next episode, next episode. I'm so glad that's not the case because I, I think that it, this is benefiting greatly, like, in my own experience about being able to talk about oh, yeah, what's so going on far, in the show. And I'm like, like the, thank goodness. Yeah. That we're, I know we're only on the second episode, but, like, I am, like, loving the fact that we're getting to talk like, about it Did you it fucking afterwards. see that, bro? Like, you know, like, I... That's one of the things that's been born from doing, doing this, you know, reacting to things, discussing them. What's being born from that is that now all I want to do is like get your take on things and yeah. discuss shows with you and episodes. It's so important. I hate I, watching things like alone now because I'm like, oh, now I can't talk to Ben about this thing. Like, <laughs> it's so important, like in my opinion. And I don't think I, I, I did not have that perspective when we first started the channel, but not just with you, with anybody. I, I think that it is so interesting to get their what they received out of it and then asking questions about what their thoughts mm -hmm. about something were because it is above all else the the best way to get to know what somebody likes and dislikes right. and it's, get get to know yeah because it's personal and too. you're sharing that experience with mm -hmm. someone so i so i adore it this is intimacy <laughs> i i know that there are channels out there that like that react to the same that stuff that we do and they they are either doing it alone or with people and they don't talk about it for a long time and that's totally of course it's like do your own thing dude but i this sometimes it's hard to find a lot to say for sure no exactly and it is and like you don't want to like try to force we never Certain try to force anything it better than but others. when it's a show like this or an episode like this it's like how can't you how do you restrain yourself from like mm -hmm. talking about how awesome it was for, At the moment, for 10 minutes, I'm like, you know? Is it because I'm excited because it's a type of show I'd want to watch and a genre that I like, or is it because it's really good? And I'm like, it's both of them. It's because it's really good. Yeah. She brought it bad. <laughs> all right. That's all I have you. Mm -hmm. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Please like, comment and subscribe. And we hope to see you next time.